us since Tuesday. Today promises to be another exciting day with four sessions, starting with session nine, Green Innovation in the Hospitality Industry. Your moderator for this session is Dr. Rupam Kona. He is a Program Director with Taylor's University, Malaysia. Take it away, Dr. Rupam. Thank you very much, Dr. Shantani. A very good morning to all of you joining different parts of the world. Uh, for some of you is evening, some of you is still in the middle of the night, or some of you is still early morning. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shantani, for giving the floor. So in this particular topic, uh, all the speakers will be sharing on green innovation. Um, if you can change the slides, Dr. Shantani. Yes. So for the presenter, we will uh, take the question answer session through Slido. Uh, our, our team assistants will be posting the direct link for the Slido through the chat. So you, or you can scan this particular code and we can take your questions. Okay, so let me introduce the first speaker. Our first speaker is Professor Fevzi, is in the Central Florida Hotel and Lodging Association, prominent chair professor within the hospitality service department at the University of Central Florida's Rosen College of Hospitality Management. He was the founding chair of the hospitality services department of UCF Rosen College. His main teaching and research area include strategic management, leadership, hospitality management, and lodging. He has over 270 academic publication as of August 12, 2022, his publications has received 16,790 citation to be precise, and he has high in H index of 61. He has chaired, co-chaired and served on numerous PhD dissertation, master thesis and in committees. He is also the editor in chief for International Journal of Contemporary Hospitality Management and Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Insights. He is also a frequent speaker at international conferences. He has received numerous prestigious research awards and recognition, including the Michael D. Olson Research Award in 2016, the University of Central Florida Scroll and Quill Society Award in 2017, the CFHLA Preminent Professor again in 2017, and John Willey, and Sun's Lifetime Research Achievement Award from ICRI in 2018. Finally, Prof. Okumas was recognized a highly cited researcher for 2021, Blythe Claribet. Based on the data from the Web of Science, the highly cited researcher ranked in top 1% from the field of publication in the year of Web of Science Citation Index. He will be speaking on green hospitality, clean innovation research in hospitality and tourism, and it will highlight the key area and research methods. It will provide suggestion for the future research field in this area. So over to you, uh, Professor Pepsi, if you can take away. Yes, we can hear you, Professor. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can see your okay. slides. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it is wonderful to join this uh, very interesting uh, conference event. I wasn't expecting 146 uh, attendees. Normal when I attend such sessions, there are 30, 40 people, uh, and I don't see their faces. But seeing 145, 46 attendees, it's it's rewarding, and also a little bit. Uh, I'm nervous now that that I have you know, attendees from all around the world, from Australia, from Africa, Europe, and the United States. So I will try to talk briefly about uh, green innovation research in hospitality and, and tourism. Uh, basically, we, uh, let me give you the outline in case some of you, you know, are lost or uh, need some structure. 
uh, we will, I will promote my two journals briefly, and then most of the topic will be green innovation research. And then we will have some concluding comments and suggestions uh, followed by a Q&A. Uh, I'm the editor of IJCHM since 2007, so 15 years uh, I have been in charge. Um, it was not an SSCI journal when I took over. In 2010, IJCHM became an SSCI journal. Last year, we received 15, uh, 1,562 submissions. As of today, we, re we, rec we have received uh, 1,019 submissions, so almost three to five submissions per day. We publish anything related to management of hospitality and tourism businesses. We publish around 200 articles per year and 12 issues. Uh, to last year, over 700 and uh, sorry, 873,000 downloads, uh, article downloads were made from IGACHM, so which is really impressive, close to 3,000 downloads per day. It's like a knowledge factory, I suppose. And our latest impact factor is 9.3 which is very impressive, I think much higher than many, many business and marketing journals. Scopus is 11.3. We try to make the first decision within the first 40 days. Uh, I want to thank our reviewers. If anyone is listening, we they submit on average their reviews in 22 days. We require at least three reviewers to make a decision and we try to sub finalize a review process a review process of a paper within three months. So I'm happy with IJCHM and I want to thank all our authors, reviewers and editorial board members for their support. In 2018, we actually in 2017, we decided to create a sister journal uh, to IJCHM. We called it Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Insights. Uh, and now it's almost five years. Last year, we received 349 submissions. And as of today, 383 submissions. So I have a feeling that we will easily reach 500 submissions uh, by the end of this year. This is not a baby journal, sister, a ba not a baby journal. I think this is an established journal now, I will say. And it's already in Scopus and it's already in the Emerging Citation Index. Our Scopus is 3.3 and we will receive JHDI's first impact factor in 2023. So, and we publish anything related to green uh, management, green practices, green innovation, both in IJCHM and JHDI. And I, when I looked at there are some references. I think IJCHM is one of the leading journals publishing research related to sustainability, green practices, green innovation. So we, we all talk a lot about innovation, innovation, we need to innovate, but it's really not that easy to innovate. Okay? And based on my research, about 90% of innovation efforts fail. This is a huge number. My PhD was all about strategy implementation. And based on my research, 80% of decisions, projects fail in organizations and are not properly implemented. So it's good, to, important to talk about innovation, creativity, uh, but it's not that easy to make it happen. It's a long process. And as I mentioned earlier, 90% of <laughs> innovation efforts really fail in in practice what we know i like this cartoon this cartoon it says yes to innovation no to change we all say welcome we want to innovate but when it comes to change we are human beings we are often really uncomfortable with innovation and with change but also change it takes a long time to make it happen i copied these some of the figures from the internet you can find there are different types of innovation from incremental to sustaining to disruptive to radical. 
Uh, I think many organizations and human beings are comfortable with incremental changes, but radical and disruptive changes uh, really painful and not easy, but sometimes we need to go through these radical and disruptive change initiatives, right? And then again, another uh, slide, a copied uh, figure from the uh, internet, you can find it online, uh, different types of uh, innovations, all right? It, it's configuration, offering, experience, uh, it's related to profit model, network structure, process, or product performance, product system, and then channel and, and, and so forth. So there are really different areas uh, of innovation when you really look at uh, holistically about the innovation process. I think these, all these uh, innovation types uh, can be applied into green innovation as well. So it is, let's move forward. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we like innovation but in reality, uh, researching innovation is not easy because you have to be there and, and some many organizations, not just in hospitality and tourism, will not allow um, researchers to observe their innovation. For example, I live and work in Orlando. Orlando is the capital of theme parks right, in the United States. But both uh, World Disney is the leading theme park company uh, and Universal is also as successful as World Disney. They do not share uh, with any of their innovation practices. It's all top confidential. For example, Walt Disney, they, when employees sign up for, for work, they have to sign an agreement that any idea, any new project, any new things, the, uh, these employees, managers create, create, they belong to the, the organization. So uh, the actual, the innovation process, it is hard to observe, hard to research. Only we do it from distance and we ask managers, employees and customers of their experience, of, of their perception. Okay, so we, and then I, based on my brief research about innovation research, in generic uh, green innovation research, there, there is an article I'm providing here, the, the, the reference, Hakalo, 2021. There are three areas for overall picture when we look at the overall picture of innovation research. It's the research context, a lot of publications on importance of green innovation why is it important how you know why we need to do it why individuals need to accept it and and so forth the importance of green innovation second is uh, initiating making it happen is green operations green innovation operations the second area and then the third area uh, there are many other areas but overall green technology green entrepreneurship green innovation management green innovation leadership. This is under the research context. And research area is sectors. We represent one major sector, the hospitality and tourism industry. Uh, but there are you know, technology, there are uh, transportation, banking, so many different sectors. Perhaps uh, our researchers in hospitality and tourism can do some comparative studies in terms of acceptance of innovation or implementation of innovation in different sectors. And then in terms of research methods, uh, this is very common, uh, innovation research methods, according to the study, it's literature reviews, but mostly empirical studies through surveys, observations and experiments, and then mathematical modeling uh, experiments these are not common in our in our hospitality and tourism, but in other fields, because um, many of our researchers are not really equipped and trained uh, in those mathematical models. So innovation research in hospitality and tourism, if we look at it, uh, based on my research and uh, as an editor, uh, one study I found, which is really, I think, captures, sorry, really captures uh, the research, green innovation research in hospitality and tourism. It's by Gurlek and Kötzeoğlu, uh, published in 2021 in the service 
industry journal. A summary of this journal is like from a basically for uh, from 2000, uh, 1996 to 2021 there were 74 studies on published on green innovation in 32 different journals and these journals by the way 32 different journals are not in not all of them are in hospitality and tourism and what is interesting is journal of this is expected journal of sustainable tourism is the a leading journal publishing green innovation research. And Europe is the leading region publishing uh, green innovation research. And then uh, when you look at really uh, green innovation research, uh, a lot of less, less conceptual studies, but more empirical research, which is expected. And surveys are main, uh, basically survey method is the main data collection. Uh, and then managers and employees uh, are the main unit analysis or we collect data mainly from managers and employees based on uh, Gurlek and Kersolu's uh, research. I think they did a bibliometric research. This was the only one I could we could find on green innovation research in hospitality and, and tourism. And uh, basically what they did, sorry, this model I tried to snip um, they offered a model, a conceptual model, summarizing the drivers of green innovation, uh, cultural factors, strategic factors, HR, uh, managerial factors, individual factors, leadership, external factors. Um, and then they also identified mediating and uh, moderating variables. And also uh, outcome, basically, uh, when you talk about the outcome, what we have is organizational factors, environmental performance, firm performance, operational performance, competitive advantage, productivity, uh, cost competitive advantage, differentiation, and also customers. This is, I think, the most, I would say, recent and comprehensive model to start with a framework for researchers who are interested in green innovation research. And when I look at other things, uh, basically another study found, I found, uh, this is not green innovation, but it is eco innovation research in hospitality and tourism. And we published this study recently, uh, two years ago in IJCHM. Basically, when you really, really look at it, uh, two journals, there are two leading journals, three leading journals publishing green innovation, so eco innovation research. Uh, one is uh, International Journal of Hospitality Management, and second, Journal of Sustainable Tourism, and the third is IJCHM. So uh, eco-innovation and green innovation, I think they are very uh, similar concepts. Uh, but what we see here, only 403 articles were published in this area. And earlier I mentioned there were 75, I think, uh, articles were published on green innovation. What is, what is, and more papers are published, have been published in recent years, and more empirical research, but mostly surveys, uh, the data were, uh, was collected through surveys. So what is interesting here, what I can say uh, to summarize, uh, green innovation research is still evolving. It is still in infancy stage uh, in hospitality and tourism. It's not really established, it's not really mature, uh, we are only touching the surface. And I, my suggestion will be follow innovation and green innovation research in other fields, just because whatever, whatever we know in our hospitality and tourism is still really in its infancy stage. And then my uh, main focus always, more interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary research focus. If we are going to work on green innovation research, perhaps we need to work with scholars, researchers from other disciplines, other fields, and also collecting data with multiple data collection methods, uh, experiments, perhaps surveys, interviews, observations, even action research, and working with organizations and helping them. And then also a uh, final word will be, I think my final comment will be just thinking about the, the actual contribution of a really of our studies rather than replicating those studies 
done in other fields in generic operations research or other marketing or strategic management or HR, just think about how we really overall can contribute to the social sciences or, or generic uh, green innovation or innovation research. And final comment, uh, my, one of my PhD students did her PhD last year, finished on innovation. And when I, when I looked at her research on green innovation, I think similar things, still infancy, still we need to work more on innovation. And, and if anyone would like to submit her paper or their papers on green innovation, they're welcome to submit to IJCHM and then JHTI. But the key here is the contribution, the so what question in terms of theoretical and practical implications. Finally, I think COVID has changed many things. Uh, and many, many businesses are suffering right now in hospitality and tourism uh, in terms of cost structure and then also finding employees. In Orlando, uh, Orlando as a destination is recovering fast. But when you really talk to uh, managers uh, and business property owners, their number one concern is finding employees and managers, you know, the great uh, exit. And technology will play a huge role in green innovation. But right now, many, many businesses, number one focus is recovery and resilience and survival. And perhaps innovation is, is important, but their main focus is finding employees and, and survive and be resilient. I stop here. Thank you very much. And I will be happy to answer questions now or later. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Febze. You're right on time and thank you for giving us the direction for the future research. Right, um, we'll go to the next speaker. Okay. Our next speaker is Professor Chi Han, who is the Dean and McGeevan Endowed Chair Professor of School of Hospitality tourism management in the Mama College of Business at the University of South Florida, who also served as a director of the M3 Center for Hospitality Technology and Innovation and coordinator also served uh, in the international programs for the hospitality and tourism management. He is also a renowned hospitality and to, uh, tourism technology expert. Dr. Chihan is also a Fulbright Specialist commissioned by the Fulbright Commission in 2018 until 2021. He is also a certified hospitality technology profession and also commissioned by the hospitality financial and technology professionals. And also Educational Institute of American Hotel and Lodging Association, also known as AHLA. He is also the editor for Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology, JHTT, and also co-author over 10 books and also 20 conference proceedings. In this session, he will be speaking on innovation and technology for sustainable hospitality and tourism, the future research agenda. So over to you, Professor Chihan. Hello? Perfect. Yes, uh, we can hear you, Professor. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. I had some uh, technical issues. So um, good uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Professor Jihan Chobanoglu. Uh, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and share my presentation. Uh, please allow me for one second. Can you see my you can, Yes, we can hear you and can see also. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, perfect. Thank you. I apologize for this little bit technical uh, situation here. 
Uh, thank you to Dr. Fezi uh, for a wonderful uh, presentation. So I'm going to uh, try to take it a little bit direction in terms of the uh, sustainability uh, for hospitality and tourism. So I'm going to look at some of the applications, actually, what's going on, and try to hopefully create some, um, uh, you know, discussions for some research questions, just like Dr. Fevzi, that I'm going to start my, so it's uh, 4.30, I've got 20 minutes. Uh, I'm going to um, also just introduce my university and the journals that I edit quickly so that for anybody who would like to submit um, any articles that they will be actually be able to do that. So I'm from University of South Florida, uh, MoMA College of Business, M3 Center for Hospital Technology and Innovation. The M3 Center uh, website is m3center.org. Um, we do a variety of different things, as you see over here in the, um, in the uh, let me hide the, and in the uh, screen, as you see, the, the one of the things that we do also, we publish open access journals, and those are uh, Journal of Global Business Insights. This is in uh, 60 year. Uh, it's open access, so these are all true open access journals. Uh, please feel free to go browse. Obviously, I'm not going to spend time uh, about them, but this is indexed in Cabell. Also, we have Journal of Global Education and Research. It's in index in ERIC for those of the people who are in. Uh, obviously, I'm not the editor of these journals. We just publish as a true open access journal. Similarly, we have a new journal. Dr. Faison Ali is the editor for this journal, Journal of Global Hospitality and Tourism. Uh, again, open access doesn't cost any money to submit or publish. Uh, we also support Journal of Mediterranean Tourism Research is an open access journal as well too. And finally, maybe uh, quite relevant to this, uh, this summer school here, um, Journal of Sustainability and Resilience, again, is an open access journal. We also have quite a few different textbooks that are all open access. So please feel free to go to m3center.org and have access to all of these. We also created as the M3 Center quite a few different MOOCs, massive online open courses, the ones that you see here and many more, MOOCacademiacentral.org, and you can also uh, feel free to go and look. And we do have also two um, big uh, MOOCs, so diversity, equity, and inclusion. So this is almost now 250,000 people on this one. And we, I think we are about 80,000 people in ethical and inclusive leadership. These are all free uh, courses that you can access. The Wellness Summit just came about. Uh, it is now uh, on the website. So you can go to wellnesssummit.org. Wonderful, great presenters from all around the world about that one. Uh, finally, I would like to tell you that about a new opportunity that we have for all the participants here. We have a master's uh, program in hospitality management. Uh, this is not new, but what is new is that we just signed $3.6 million fellowship agreements with several hospitality companies. So if any of the uh, attendants here, uh, professors, uh, please tell this to your students that we do have fellowships, which is uh, amazing because it's almost 75% of the master's degree is covered by this fellowship. Obviously, it's competitive. And one of the great advantages about this is that while the students are studying master's, they actually have access to a management level job at one of our partner hotels or restaurants. So finally, I'm the editor of Journal of Hospital Tourism Technology. So I invite you. <clears throat> to submit this journal. Uh, we are really proud of this journal. It's only 11 years old. <clears throat> and then it is indexed in SSCI. And we got our uh, two 2021 impact factor as 5.5, obviously, um, compared to some other journals. But this is ranked number six among all SSCI journals uh, in the hospitality area. So OK, without further ado, I spent uh, about three minutes on this short introduction about the things that I thought that maybe the, the audience might find uh, in, uh, in, informative. Um, 
to my topic in innovation and technology for sustainable tourism and hospitality, M3 Center has conducted a variety of different think tanks. In this think tank, we wanted to find out what is ahead, what are the trends for hospitality in 2030 and beyond. So these think tanks may be uh, even, uh, there might be some people in the audience who may have participated in these um, in these uh, think tanks. The first one we did in 2018, October in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh City as part of a conference that we organized. We also did one in New York and we did in 2019 in Cyprus. Of course, this is before the pandemic. And then what we have done also on top of the think tanks, we asked people, what are the trends that are happening in hospitality and tourism? Uh, we coupled that one with the Delphi study, experts from around the world uh, in hospitality and tourism, as well as also the tourists itself as well too, which is sometimes uh, one of the area, uh, uh, demographics or one of the components that are omitted from our research. Then we have actually uh, collected all of this information into one and we came up with some of the top 10 hospitality and tourism trends. As you can see, and again, this is not because of this presentation that I'm making, but number one came from all of the think tanks in three different parts of the world and also the Delphi study from the experts to professionals to all around the people that number one trend is sustainable tourism. Number two is technology, hence my presentation here. Experience tourism was number three, innovation was number four, uh, number five was security and safety, number six is personalization, Number seven is artificial intelligence and robots. Even though this is technology, it emerged as a, another trend, as a separate trend because it was so strong. Sharing economy was number eight. Number nine, nine was alternative tourism. And finally, number 10 was wellness tourism. So I will leave this with you for a few seconds to kind of like look at those top 10. Obviously, the presentation that I am making is got con connected to to top two here, uh, sustainable tourism and technology. When you look at the world population, all of us know that we are almost 8 billion people now. So this number is increasing every single uh, second. As you can see, this is a simulation uh, meter for the world population um, that you can find. So we are almost 8 billion people. And by the time that we go into 2100, it's going to be almost 11 billion people on the world. What does that mean? This means that look at this uh, busy slide here. And I would like to put your attention to the top uh, row there, uh, series of rows. This is the number of international travelers that travel from one country to another. In 1990, uh, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse here or not, but in 1990, there were 435 million international travelers. And if you look at the distribution of that between advanced economies and emerging economies, uh, it was like one third from emerging economies, two third, roughly two third is from advanced economies. When you come to 2015, that's the um, th that's the year that we, uh, 2014 was the first year that we suppressed more than 1 billion international travelers. If you look at 2015, this gap is actually closed. So it's almost 55 to 45. In other words, so the emerging economies, such as, um, for example, China, uh, Malaysia, Turkey, Russia, Brazil, all of these countries now, their middle class is growing, hence the international travel is increasing more, which is a good thing. But as you all know, before the pandemic, one of the most um, probably talked um, areas is, is uh, over tourism. A lot of people talk about over tourism, not necessarily that too many people are visiting, it's just too many people visiting a certain destinations, such as, for example, the one that you just see on the, the picture Great Wall in China uh, is really, if you think about an experience, this is hard to call this an experience, just that the pictures like you see of this uh, was very often um, before the pandemic. Now, of course, with China being still closed down, it is not like this, but in many other places. Obviously, 
as we all know, uh, sustainable tourism is something that you want to keep it going. But as you can see here that Time magazine did an article one time that the Chinese people want people to stop stealing Great Wall bricks. Obviously, a lot of people who may be doing this may not be doing it to harm. They were thinking that they are taking uh, souvenirs, etc. Of course, that is not sustainable. This is Disney before the pandemic. And of course, in 2020, the pandemic came. The whole definition of hospitality and tourism changed. It went into this one. From this one to this one. As you can see, obviously, that was a wake-up call for everybody. And maybe many of you already know Venice, which is a very popular destination in Italy, were so tired of the tourists that it was just too much. The local people didn't couldn't live their regular life. Obviously, one of the definitions of sustainable tourism that it should not damage the life of the locals. So they were so um, fed up with it that you will see many different things. So the pandemic uh, has actually kind of like, it was a wake up call in the sense that ecology versus economy, the whole world stuff to how can you balance the two? While you are keeping the ecology, how can you also support the economy with tourism in our context here? So this is an article that that I was one of the co-authors that we looked at uh, in the United States with the M3 company data. So this was the data from about 5,000 hotels. We looked at the loss, the profits um, over the last um, many years that we can find if their profit is impacted by the climate change. Uh, as you can see from the, the uh, one of the figures that we use in the article that as the, um, the world climate gets warmer, the profits are declining. Obviously, um, this is uh, pretty common, but that's what we are awaiting in the future if uh, as a human, not just for hospital tourism, but if you don't do anything to be able to stop this uh, global warming. And here is one of the kind of uh, positive impacts of COVID in the ecology. This, this um, uh, example that I'm gonna show you comes from uh, Italy, Venice. Let's watch this uh, video very quickly and then I'll continue. Italy was Europe's first epicenter for the coronavirus outbreak, but now it's starting to reopen. Venice, one of the world's most famous cities, has suffered without its usual tourists, but it's enjoyed an unintended benefit. Chris Livesay traveled to the city of water to see how nature is suddenly flourishing. Good morning. Now, as hard as the lockdown has been on all of us, there's one silver lining no one can deny. Staying at home has been largely good for the environment. And here in Venice, this lagoon city has returned to its pre-industrial tranquility. And I'm sure that you have seen many, many examples just like this. So, and um, here before the pandemic, when the cruise ships come to Venice, uh, it's kind of like a Disneyland, they people come. So when we look at the sustainability, innovation in hospitality and tourism, we see Dear participant, I believe uh, we have lost uh, Prof. Sheehan for the time being. We will wait for a while to him to reconnect. I'm sure he will join soon. Yes, I don't believe so. Hello. Can you hear yes, me? Uh, you yes, yes, yes. 
I apologize. Technology again. I am so sorry. No just couldn't, I don't know where I uh, dropped, but uh, I'm going to try to go back one slide and then uh, do this again. I apologize. So maybe I was at this slide, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the slides before, I believe. Okay, yes, perfect. Yes, correct. So perfect. I'll, I'll, I'll go back again. This is what we are trying to uh, look at the smart city in the whole context. It is the connected um, systems together. And when we look at this in the uh, smart tourism context, so you look at the different segments of hospitality and how we are going to use it to be able to do it. So the way that I de define technology myself is any skill, tool, process, or way of doing anything better, faster, more efficient, cheaper, more sustainable. Uh, if you look at the definition of smart, again, in anything, so it can be in smart tourism, smart government, is uh, defined as connected technologies that make decisions or take actions without manual input that creates more efficient, faster, cheaper processes. So the whole idea is about smart is that one system talk to other system without really manual input. So that's the key. Obviously, we all know about this. So let's see some examples. Um, smart city in the sense of uh, residence life and tourism is making people, uh, cities more livable. So how, let's see some of the information. Internet of Things is the technology that allows us to be able to connect devices together. As you all know today, even when you're buying a bridge, a fridge, new bridge, fridge that it is connected to internet, it scans the items inside the fridge, and it tells you when the milk is getting out of uh, the stock there. So you can not only maybe order by yourself, but you can actually connect your uh, refrigerator to your uh, app for your uh, grocery store. So it can even order eggs and milk and et cetera for you that you will just get it delivered to your um, uh, home. And here is another example of a street light, which is obviously a great security uh, device for our streets, for residents and tourists alike. But these street lights are smart now. It's another example. It can actually gather and send information such as traffic information, parking availability, surveillance, and weather quality. And there are quite a few different cities that are using these kind of traffic lights to be able to enhance the residents and tourist life alike. Uh, in terms of an application uh, in for a, finding a parking spot. So if you were to go around the city and with the help of this smart um, devices, such as traffic lights, that you'll be able to find a parking place much easier. And similarly, it's going to enhance the life accessible tourism. For residents, again, or for the tourists, is this uh, wheelchair here is going to talk to these traffic lights, allow uh, enough time for the uh, the person go across the street so that it does not turn red in the middle of the road. So all of these things uh, bring us to sustainability. A little bit more examples from hospitality and tourism. And every single slide that I show here is potentially a research uh, area. Um, so as you know, one of the biggest green, probably criticized, portions of hospitality industry is golf clubs. They have huge greens. And so one of, of course, you need a lot of water to be able to water them. Uh, one of the things is this smart golf course watering systems where these smart sensors uh, work with the uh, satellites to be able to see the weather. Plus they also measure the uh, humidity level in the soil. Hence, uh, is, is controlling the watering system for these golf courses, which has huge green uh, places. And the research that talks about says that these systems save between 25 to 50 percent of water for watering all of these places. Smart air conditioning is also, as you know, this is what you see on the picture, is a classical um, split klima or air conditioning. 
which is from the energy perspective is quite inefficient. So, um, you know, the, the scientists actually looked at what you see here, got the idea from the underground, underground city. This happens to be in Turkey, in Cappadocia region. If any of you have visited, you will probably know that this is the underground city. So what is the relationship of this underground city to chiller plants is actually that as you go down in this underground city, that whatever that you put here is colder. So if you go into the, even the fifth or sixth floor, that it was almost, it naturally keeps things in a freezing uh, temperature. So this is the same idea. So people actually put the water tanks under the earth to a level that the water which is put there is uh, by nature, it's cold. And by taking that cold water through the pipes and uh, getting the hot air through those um, uh, the, the cold water pipes will cooling and again saves huge amount of energy for hotels, for resorts, for of course regular buildings as well too. So this is an example from my university where they have installed this one. And water uh, and electricity meters can be smart also is turning into smart where you are going to be able to see consumption for you to be able to see where how you are doing in terms of that. So here's some other technologies. This, uh, <coughs> this one is a robotic eel for water quality. As you can see in the video, that this uh, robotic eel drives in, the, um, drives in the lakes or uh, water um, you know, reservoirs to be able to, or even sea um, beaches, takes the water, uh, test, analyze it, and sends it with the wireless um, um, antenna to the uh, scientists. And of course, they, this, can, this information can be shared with residents and tourists for the safety of that water to swim, to drink, etc. You see many different examples. This is the one from... Uh, it's removing the trash and also doing the same thing I just told earlier, testing the water quality as well too. Traffic uh, lights. Uh, are turning into smart where it's looking at the the flow of the traffic, keeping it as much as effective as it's possible. Smart transportation, we see a lot of different things. This is a seven eight seven, which is the first plane that's made of plastic, uh, much cheaper for that reason, much lighter. Therefore, it is about twenty to twenty five percent more uh, energy efficient than its competitors. That's why you see a lot of discount airlines going even to a and this is the rocket uh, that Elon Musk, uh, Musk has introduced, uh, which is going to actually become uh, probably a reality in the next 10 years, 10 to 15 years. Obviously, from the sustainability perspective, this is going to take people from New York to London in 29 minutes because it's going to go into uh, space and then come back. So that is going to change the way that we travel internationally most of the time air taxis you see that they're being piloted every uh, in a lot of different places this one uh project wahana uh, is actually coming from airbus as you can see this is a video i don't know if you can see it over here but um airbus is also looking at electric planes how that is uh going to shape the way that we travel. Flying cars is going to be a challenge. It appeared a lot of people thought that by this year we would have flying cars, but because of the air um, control uh, complications, it didn't happen yet. Uh, there is... is actually helping the cars to come to a carport and then go and do it. Hyper um, loop is reality now. The test has been completed. It's an unbelievable system where you can see, for example, the tube being sucked in the air. It goes into the speeds of airplane on the ground transportation. So it goes about 1,000 kilometer per hour, which is, of course, it's going to change. And from the sustainability perspective, we really need to do a lot of research how they are going to impact travel and, of course, sustainable tourism. Autonomous cars 
and uh, maybe shared cars are going to come in the next uh, 10 to 20 years that we will not own our cars, but we are going to own shared cars where we are going to be able to control them with our apps and maybe uh, hence uh, impact the sustainability practices as well too. So this particular example that you see from the hotel room, which allows the guests to be able to make some uh, determinations about how green practices that these people turning on and offering the lights, uh, also AC when you're not in the room, etc. which all bring us to, of course, Maslow uh, level of hierarchy. Uh, I think I'm going to be out of my time very soon. So Wi-Fi, and better life can be added, of course, as a joke to this one, but it me brings us to this, um, the power hungry devices that we all use now from our smartphones, just like this. Now you see a lot of hotels and uh, for you know, restaurants and cafes have outlets like this to be able to give their people the, the uh, power that they need. But there is one of the innovations that is coming up, which is in the last 10 years, has been growing a lot is wireless charging, which will uh, eliminate the need for a cable for any of the things that, that is uh, happening. So that's also going to change the way that we use technology if we are not connected to um, We all here, solar empowering glass, solar panels have been usually traditionally are black. They are big, uh, they are bulky. It looks uh, probably not very pleasant, but yet uh, one company in Israel has created this particular glass, clear glass, but yet it's generating solar power. So that's going to really change the way that we design hotels and resorts and other buildings to be able to use this energy. Here's one example from Taiwan, Gogoro is a motorcycle that is electric, but instead of charging this, you go to gas stations and then you just simply take this um, batteries out and replace that with the ones that are already charged. So hence it really eliminates literally, it's like a gas station, instead of just filling your tank, you just simply take your um, the batteries. So this is me. Uh, in time. We are here. Uh, this particular technology. Uh, in conclusion, that I would like to tell you that sustainability in tourism obviously is so important, but here is a lot of some of the examples that I try to bring it to you to be able to help sustainability in tourism. So the research question that is still uh, waiting here, are these technologies really help the sustainability or actually uh, it is a paradox. It's even hurting it more. Hence, uh, we are going to do it, but I'm. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Here's my contact information. Obviously, I'll be happy to take the questions uh, later. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chihan, for finishing it uh, very quickly and on time. Uh, we will move on to our next speaker. Okay, well, to remind... Uh, all the participants, once again, if you haven't posted the questions to our speaker, please use the link and post your questions. We will take it at the end. Okay, so our, our speaker number three, uh, last but not the least, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Kandapan Balasubramaniam um, from the School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events, and also an Associate Director for Human Capital Development for the research, Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism. Faculty of Social Sciences and Leisure Management from the Taylor's University, who's also embraced the technology as a part of his teaching and learning pedagogy, and also continuously empowers to innovate himself with the latest development of technology in order to meet the change that today's learners. Mm -hmm. He has also taken the mandate and also made it personal aspiration, striving to broaden his ability in technology integration in the classroom. Dr. Kandapan also uh, innovation and transformation in teaching and during the pandemic as well as well recognized awarding him as one of the Taylor's distinguished e-learning educator of class of 2021. He has also received the Apple distinguished educator class of 2015, a global community of educator are recognized for doing amazing things for Apple technology in and out of the classroom. He served as a cluster leader of, for teaching and learning in the school to execute various projects as Education 4.0, 
MOOC e-learning initiatives, I Square Week, borderless classroom, student-centric learning. He also has appointed as visiting professor for the Lyceum of the Philippines University in Manila and University of Santo Thomas in the Philippines as well. And also is in the Bit Business School uh, India. Dr. Kantapan owned the MS Exemplary Meritorious Academic Staff Award for his transformation of training from digital, transitional to digital. He'll be talking on green building, uh, innovation for sustainable future and green luxury. So over to you, Dr. Kandapan, the floor is yours. Hey, thank you so much, Dr. Rupa. Let me quickly check whether my audio is clear and good. Yes, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the CRIT, being, even though being an organizing committee, uh, I would like to thank the main organizer for giving me an opportunity to share this uh, virtual e-stage with uh, two prominent professors from our field of expertise, Prof. Chian and Prof. Fepsi. It's my great honor. So without further ado, kindly allow me to share the screen. I'm sure the screen is visible to all of you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. So I will be covering more on green building portal innovations for sustainable future and green luxury. Uh, with the given time, I think uh, uh, being a third speaker always, we have to ensure that we don't repeat information from the previous speakers. And I think I was really enjoying listening to the previous two speakers, a lot of information insights. Let me quickly go through my slides. Uh, the definition of green innovation based on my presentation. Uh, let me start with the general green innovation before going to the industry. It's basically the moment we use the word green innovation, the, we call GI, people always talk about how it is linked with the environmental harms and risk, how we are going to reduce the harm of the environment with various innovations, especially whether in the process or in the management, administrative, or in your business models. I think there are a lot of research done in other areas too on the green innovation. I just put some of the citations here just for your reading. But mostly, most of the uh, industries or se sectors, they focus green innovation literature basically on three dimensions, which is on product innovation, which is a process and organizational innovations. It's and very importantly, all this innovation should be linked to environmental friendly goods and services. So let me go to how we connect our green innovation in our industry, especially hospitality and tourism industry. It's very important for us to implement the green innovation by ensuring that it does not affect the consumers or customers' experience. At the same time, it should not reduce the uh, experience of the customer. Rather, it should reduce the damage of the environment. So I think the recent study, I think Gurlak Tun 2018, he very well clearly mentioned that the GI in the industry is to develop environmental friendly and specific service or production process and organization method it's mainly focused to reduce the damages to the environment. And also there is another study in 2017, Albert Monet and others, they said, followed with uh, Singh and others in 2020, whatever green innovation we are going to integrate into our hospitality and tourism industry, ensure that those new application is to reduce the consumption of various natural resources. It can be water, electricity, and other raw materials. Lastly, and also the another uh, researcher they mentioned in 2019, it's very important to establish an environmental management system. I think this is where the industry revolution or the advancement of technology and information system will help us to integrate the system. This is where the human, in the, this human augmentation era, I think involvement of the technology is very important. So I think we need to invest on information system. So moving forward, why we need to focus on green innovation? There will be a lot of questions always, right? 
Because whenever we ask any new initiatives, the question arises. I just listed five or six here. One is to pay attention on the sustainability in your hotel. That means we are trying to insist the sustainability within our hotel. Number two, probably it can be your brand awareness going green. I think it will try to lift your brand in the global market that this particular hotel is doing a lot of green in your initiatives. And also number three, to align ourselves with the regulation by the government from various countries, because there are a lot of countries, they start putting regulations to ensure that every organization to have some environmental practices and basically to encourage our industry to make a difference compared with other industry. And fifth, uh, my fifth point here, we also need to contribute to our global warming concerns, right? I think the green innovation is, is it's one of the solution. I say it's not the only, it's one of the solution to address the global warming concerns. And basically, even though the investment at the initial point, it's huge investment on the green innovation. But when you look into the long-term monetary saving, I think it definitely will benefit your overall hotel revenue. And what, why we green, we are talking about green innovation from a global agenda. I think by, according to the Paris Climate Agreement, when you take in 2015, hotels should reduce the emission per key in the hotel by 90 percentage. It's just uh, forecasting predictions. So why, so how we can do that? There are some points they listed, eliminating single use plastics. I think the hotels like Sheraton, and many hotels in other countries, they already removed all the plastic usage amenities in the hotel rooms has been replaced with the wood. That means where for they work with the timber companies, all the waste wood has been converted into the in-room amenities, including comb and everything. And creating paperless environment, that's very important. I think this is where the technology has been embracing in the recent days, especially during and after COVID. And sourcing from sustainable supplier, that's very, very important. So try to get from a, a company, supplier who is going to have green practices. That's why I think recent days, there is also a lot of uh, research done on green supply chain management in the food industry, as well as in our hospitality F&B retail industry. And very importantly, developing recycling program. That's also very important. I think it's very important to create an awareness, educate, all the stakeholders in our industry, which will help us to save energy and also lower CO2. Okay, moving forward. Uh, yeah, what are the reasons to focus? Probably we need to understand what are the issues, right? I think when you take the sustainable environmental issues in the hospitality industry, especially when we segment into four parts, water, energy, food, and plastic, so when you say water usage, it's a big problem. Many resorts and hotels, they use a lot of water, but even hot pools, hot shower, but what we are going to do on that, right? How we are going to effectively use that, we will see in a short while in the upcoming slides. And energy usage, I think this is another important thing which we need to really focus, how we can serve energy, how we can have a renewable energy, right? That's very important. Number three, food waste. That's a, one of the biggest area where, especially from a culinary arena, there is a lot of wastage has been thrown, but other part of the world, the people are hunger for food. So how we can close this gap through our good research and also good initiative in the industry. Lastly, plastic bag wastage. I think this becomes a very important. I think anything comes from cups to the company, I think it's very important. I think when we say no plastic, really we should reduce, we should stop giving plastic, not like charging premium price for that, providing plastic. That means you are still giving an outlet for the consumer to buy plastic. Okay, how we can link all these green innovations with SDG? There are 17 SDGs, but what are the good or probably and suitable SDGs to link? I think number six, clean water and sanitation. Number seven, affordable and clean energy and sustainable cities and communities, number 11, number 13, climate actions. Okay, just an example from a research from Hassan and others from 2020, published in Sustainability Journal. 
You can see there are three different measures they have taken as a green hotel innovation practices, energy, water, and waste. And they have linked with four different SDGs, six, seven, 12, and 13. And they really related to the environmental related SDG. I think this is something how we can link green innovation SDG to our research arena. Just taking the first example, green practices. I think this is an example from a hotel, how they have invested in EMS, like energy management system, this company called BASE. You can see it integrated smart power outlets, occupancy sensors, smart lighting system, thermo systems, everything. That means it's become like a seamless uh, monitoring system to save the energy. So what it basically, why we need to invest this? Because there are nearly 70% of the time, the rooms are unoccupied, correct? Whether only during the season, we get a very good occupancy. But sometimes how we can reduce those unoccupied rooms with more energy conservation. There's also high chances when the housekeeping goes for a cleaning, they didn't turn off, or probably there is also other causes which can increase our energy consumption. So I think through implementing EMS, probably it can lower your total energy consumption at the same time improves your maintenance operations. And it also helps you to schedule. I think it's a very interesting part of this particular thing is it also gives you a lot of signages and indications of scheduling to increase your maintenance. So that means it alarms. So why we need this overall to reduce the energy use and maintenance to improve your overall guest experience. What are the other ways? I think this is another source I've taken from uh, Menergy website. Very interesting. What are the other opportunities for lowering energy costs in hotels? I think they put in his six main bullets. Number one, integral energy design plus planning. This will lower your energy use. Number two, they say using local sources of renewable energy. When you say local roses, probably it can be your solar or even your vegetable or maybe your organic form or putting a small windmill if it is a resource in a wind area. So recycling of energy and air conditions and ventilation of hotel rooms and energy recycling. And number four, reuse of energy from household water. That's very important. And reuse of water energy from the kitchen and automation and regulations. Some examples, how we can save water and energy from a local context. This is one of the famous hotel from Malaysia, Fringipani, Lankabi. This hotel has been a pride because this is zero water wastewater system integrated by uh, Prof. Anthony, and he's also an adjunct uh, professor with Taylor's. Uh, it's, it's totally under percentage natural filtration system, which utilizes the aquatic plants to treat the wastewater turned into grade A drinking water it's to keep the hotel plants hydrated and healthy. I think this is an example how we can use the water system in the hotel. Another example from Maldives, how they have implemented the sonar panels into the surrounding private pools, terrace, and beaches, because Maldives is also in luxury destinations. So how we can bring an energy measures in there, this kind of uh, probably villas, water villas, floating villas. Some more examples from Malaysians and Australian context. I think this is another interesting example from Hot Spring Retreat, what they have done. They have insisted a natural geothermal hot spring to reduce the water wastage where the spa skincare range is made locally with natural ingredients to avoid pollutions from harm chemicals. I think when we say green innovation, it also for, comes from your product and services, right? Even uh, reducing the carbon print is also considered. Uh, so another example from Kuala Lumpur, Element Hotel. So it stands tallest eco-friendly building in the Klang Valley. Because why? Because uh, they have all day dining venue terrace source directly from the local farm to minimize the waste and reduce hotel miles. And when you see the rooms, filtered water that are safe for drinking straight from the kitchen tap, eliminate the usage of plastic water bottles. I think the similar concept has been adapted in Hilton. They introduced the hydration stations. And this is another example from Australia, Tala Beach 
this is very interesting. This, sub, this is basically supporting the local communities and environmental friendly practices. So the four pillars of this particular hotel sustainable tourism is protection of natural heritage, culture, and helping the community and environmental. So probably saving the environmental practice. And another example from our neighboring country, Singapore, uh, Park Royal Collection, which is, uh, in, uh, which is the one of the good hotel long-term sustainability with the green innovations, which has been planted with 2,400 plants and trees spread across 15,000 square meters. And they in, installed almost 210 solar panels to run the entire hotel with solar panel. I think when I see this, I can still relate back to the world's first airport in Cochin from India. The entire airport runs from solar system. I think this is a way how a long-term sustainability with green practices. Similarly, in Singapore, very interesting hotel, I think well-known hotel, YSS Hotel. Uh, I think in 2018, they named as the best tall building worldwide by the council, by tall building and urban. But that is not only the key highlight here. The important highlight here, the tower has given 40 percentage of its volume to open air communal terrace in the sky. I think that plays a natural, how you connect your consumer to the nature, where you can also increase your natural consumption and reduce or probably reduce your energy and others within your premises. The, the enclosed space or cooled by its effectively chilled water system. That's a very interesting, the whole hotel, they have a chilled water system to ensure that the entire premises maintains the temperature. I think an example from another country in the US, I think the first net zero carbon emission hotel, uh, I think I just highlighted they are the hotel with the lead certification because this certification, it's not easy to get until you come from the scrap from the building until to the implementation stage. All the green practices has to be implemented. Uh, recommendations for green conservations and carbon reductions. Okay, so what are the things we can do to ensure that how the green innovation can help the sustainability of the hotel industry? Low carbon hotel facilities, low carbon energy, low carbon hotel certifications and concept promotion. So what we can see in these four points, it helps for the marketing recognition in the global market and also consumer and the stakeholders. So basically this initiative can help all the stakeholders. So conclusion for me, the earth does not belong to us, we belong to the earth. So it's very important for us to save the energy, all the natural resources. So I think the ultimate goal of establishing a GI hotels is, green innovative hotel is to reduce low carbon footprints in the hotel, to reduce energy consumption through the use of water, electricity, gas, and fuels, to increase the use of clean energy, to reduce the overall energy consumption, thus we can achieve the sustainable development. So it's very important to clearly divide the lighting area and use segmentation to open the way. The temperature setting of air condition in winter should not exceed 20. So I think these are all some uh, key points or takeaway uh, probably you can take from my sharing. Some of the reference, I also like to acknowledge my master's students because some of the key points are used through our case discussion in the topic in from the previous semester on the green innovation in the hotel industry. Where I also invited the industry panels from during the student sharing seminars and discussion. So I would like to acknowledge all the industry panels and my students. And thank you so much. We all together, let's work towards the SDGs. People who want to reach out to me, these are all my information on the left. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kandapan, for your very interesting sharing and, and given examples. Right, uh, we have come down to our q and session. So for all of the speakers here, I have a few questions. Um, so let me start with, the first question is uh, for Prof. Chihan. Uh, very interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, Prof. Chian, are you with us? You can... Yeah, I am here. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. You can I'm see listening. You. All right. Okay. So the first question is for you, dear Prof. Chihan, could you share how can we become a part of the catalyst 
in green innovation in hospitality and tourism industry? Yeah, I think this is a great question. Uh, one of the main areas is for us as a tourism researchers, if the, uh, the, the person who's asking the question is from asking this context is the contribution with our research. I'll give you a very uh, simple example. One of the research that we are currently do, uh, doing is one of the autograph edition hotels of Marriott. As you know that they have these systems where um, people have in the hotel rooms, when the guest leaves the hotel room, they, the system automatically detects that there is nobody in the room, human or animal, and then cuts the energy. Let's say if it is in the summer, the AC, if it is in the winter, it's the heat. But the uh, some of the research that I've done shows the paradox, even though people say that they are environmentally green, they don't like the inconvenience when they come back to their room, the room is either too hot or too cold. So there is a lot of research that needs to be done from these perspectives. Another example is the golf uh, courses, as I have given example for those uh, systems that are claiming that they are uh, saving 25 to 50 percent. So there is a lot of great opportunities here for interdisciplinary research where we look at some of these technologies to see that if they really are doing what they are saying that they are doing, uh, you know, saving the energy, uh, making it more efficient, whatever that might be. I think that will be a huge um, help to the industry. And also for us, us as the researchers for our uh, responsibility to the industry so that the research that we produce in this uh, area will really help them to be able to make wise decisions when they design new hotels. Uh, I'm currently happen to be in Turkey right now, uh, just attended a, a, another conference here that the hotel that I am staying currently is uh, renovated. And so that, for example, when they are doing the renovation, which kind of technology they should and can use to be able to help the sustainable tourism. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Um, another question is, uh, I, I believe it's very related towards research uh, for both uh, Prof. Chihan and Prof. Pepsi. Uh, in, in, in perspective to research, what are the most urgent issues that uh, we need to take action on green innovation towards sustainability? What kind of trends do you see that coming in our research paper, uh, either from developed country or either from developing countries? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? I think I can offer some comments. I think um, reducing cost and uh, how employees are using technology, uh, green technology, and acceptance of green technology by employees and, and customers. Uh, and uh, food waste, again, another thing, and water, um, electricity. These are, I think, common areas for green innovation. Right? And, but technology is right now is the driving force and acceptance of technology and the cost of technology are key areas for research, I would say. I, I can just add very quickly to that one. Right now, one of the things that from the GHTT perspective is looking at how, uh, just like Dr. Fevzi said, in specific technology, but in specific artificial intelligence to be able to balance uh, these smart systems that are interconnected to each other, uh, how they are going to be done also, which is again, part of AI domain is the robots, uh, which we are seeing sustainability in the perspective of um, even the sustainability of the industry itself. So those are the, some of the key areas that I would love to welcome to Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Technology. Thank you very much, uh, both of you. Uh, there's another question for all of you. So the question is, dear Prof, uh, for the developing countries, what is the place for applied technologies in hospitality that aren't necessarily smart? Hmm. 
Yeah, maybe Dr. Kandapat would like to start. So this is a generic question for all of you. If you want me to repeat the question, I can. Yeah, you just repeat the question, Dr. Rupa. Sure. Uh, for developing countries, what is the place for applied technologies in hospitality that aren't necessarily smart? Thank you. That's a very interesting question. I think uh, when 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 you, when you see during the COVID, I think the technology embracement has been increased very tremendously. Uh, I think even it has reached to the corner of any part of the world. Uh, I think it's very important now digital impression to ensure. I think the digital impression become a first path in hospitality and tourism industry, starting from pre-experience during and post experience. So any developing country, I think they can start investing the technology from a simple QR code uh, to ensure that they have a contactless check-in or even in a dining space, it can be contact like e-menus. Uh, probably they can also integrate their culture values into the menu through the technology integration because not only serving the authentic food, but probably you can also give a lot of information or probably even a cooking cooking demonstration of the menu. Uh, I think that this is where I think the small, small things which uh, any developing country can invest with a very minimum cost uh, to provide, or probably I can say to, to address the need of the global consumer's expectation. And maybe I will pass to other two professors to add on. Sure. Um, I, I can just maybe add the, uh, right on, on, on um, topic here, Professor. In terms of the QR code, I can also add that I was in a restaurant just recently, uh, actually in, in, in Turkey, which is uh, a developing country, where you see the QR code in the restaurant. Obviously, we are all used to it, right? We take our device, we scan the code, the menu comes. But this particular restaurant took it to a little bit level up, so the menu is customizable in the order of most ordered items. When we go to a restaurant, we ask what's what's good here, what's 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 the you know recommendation. So you can see. So they actually added smartness to it. Another quick example that I can give, maybe in with the pandemic, with the contactless technologies, some of the um, hotels and restaurants implemented instead of automatic doors, which kind of like when you come co close to the door, instead of that one, they just simply put a one uh, foot handle, which is installed into the door, which is $8, at least in the United States, which allows the guest either to open the door with the handle or by pushing your foot into the thing to open. So when I define technology in my presentation, I didn't say necessarily high technology, computer servers, anything that makes things more efficient, cheaper, faster is defined as technology as far as I'm concerned. So from the perspective of this, I think technology can be a variety of things. Smartness comes in the sense that it's connected to other systems without the manual input. So which, by the way, is this this smart technologies is a wonderful way for uh, developing nations to be able to gain momentum with technology because it's very, very doable. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chihan. Uh, Prof. Fevzi, any thought, anything, any maybe last add-on? I think technology is moving fast from developing developed countries to developing countries. When I first came to the United States, we, I, or when I traveled to Japan and to other countries, I would see all these smart toilets, all right, uh, and saving water and everything. Now I see that in many, many countries. So a lot of opportunities and technology is getting cheaper as well in terms of saving water, electricity, and also safety and touchless uh, doors and, and everything. Uh, I think te technology is offering a lot of uh, great opportunities for developing countries, especially in the hospitality and tourism industry. And any Thank technology you. in a way is a little bit smart. There are high technologies or regular, but they are still smart in a way. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Prof. Pepsi. So with respect to the time, maybe I'll take one last question. Uh, there's one question, this is for all the speakers. Uh, what's your take on best practices in accelerating net zero carbon emission in the tourism industry in the next decade? Uh, any thoughts? So this question is for all the speakers. Any of you could? I think solar planes we, we whenever you travel i think one way or another we are polluting an environment okay even in your own city when you go to a restaurant you're just polluting one way or another uh, so it's how we will invest environment and protect and i was looking at some solar trains uh, planes cars everything a minimum that will be my I think best practice or even hotels having their own electricity uh, recycling water and everything so thank you yeah I, I can just add to what Dr. Fevzi have said I have shared with the audience uh, one of the technologies which is the clear glass that is creating solar power that's going to be the future it's already impacted some of the designs of new hotels, also residences for that matter, is instead of walls, as much as glass as possible, <clears throat> which will turn into regular daylight into energy, right? So there is a lot of stuff that we are going there. And the, the fact that uh, transportation and hotels, uh, the LEED certification, the level of uh, sustainability achieves is very remarkable obviously we are not there yet so i think uh, it will probably take another 10 years to be able to innovate technologies that's going to enable net zero um, emissions for uh, hospitality and tourism products thank you probably uh, uh, yes uh, i'll quickly add on since i i touch the slides bit on that uh, I think it's very important for all the hotels to adapt more energy saving and environmental friendly construction and decoration materials. I think it should start from the construction itself. Uh, I think even selecting a low carbon suppliers uh, and probably to, to equip our efficiency of the energy use. And another thing, probably a rainwater harvesting systems in the hotels to save the water. I think which in back in India, I think many hotels, they have adapted that. I think this kind of small things can definitely important in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that, I can conclude the Q&A session and I will quickly summarize what the speaker has talked about. So on the first presentation with Prof. Pepsi, he has highlighted, given many examples of uh, research that have been published in European countries and also the research context, research areas using the research method. He has also highlighted some eco-innovation research. Uh, then he also highlighted green innovation, evolving research, multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary triangulation and contribution. So looking at that, he highly encouraged all the participants, all the academic researchers to do research in this particular area. Uh, with the second presentation from uh, Professor Chihan, he focused on the top 10 uh, hospitality and tourism trends that he has done uh, extensive research. Um, and I'm proud to say that I also participated in that. And uh, he also shared the interesting facts on tourist numbers, uh, the negative aspect of over tourism, impact of climate change, and also provided very good examples of smart technology. In our last presentation, uh, Dr. Kandapan shared on the green innovation in hospitality industry, focusing on the impacts on the climates, as well as given some examples and linking with SDGs with some potential examples from the academia published in the research channel. And lastly, he also highlighted some of the very interesting examples that developing countries or developed countries have been doing to support the SDGs goal. So with that, I thank you everybody for joining this session and all the speakers for your insightful sharing. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. We'll go to a digital photo session, but before that, we will take a quick feedback from all of you uh, on one word, using one word to give with the slider. So you can scan you with your phone, 
and you can give us a feedback. How do you like this session? So we'll stay for a while in this particular screen. I hope everybody can scan and give us a feedback. How do you like this session? Okay, we will move on to now to taking digital photo. Maybe I'll uh, ask uh, Mr. Kanapot if you can take a group photo for all this along with the speakers and participants. Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you also, Dr. Rupam, for moderating uh, our panel. We appreciate you very much. And pleasure. thanks to the organizers for inviting us. Thank so you very I'll much. Move on to the next page. Okay. I believe we can all give a nice smile. Okay, the next page. Next page. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Rupa for managing the session.